My story begins in 2009. I'm at my very first job out of college. I'm 22 years old and I'm an associate producer in a documentary film. Uh, we've been traveling around the world, mainly to Bangladesh, Guatemala, um, and we do end up filming in the US and now we are on our way to Tanzania. Um, Tanzania has actually been the hardest trip to, to plan for out of all of them. Uh, we've been in about nine months of pre-production um, and it's just been super difficult getting the uh, required paperwork to film um, through the government and the Ministry of Information and it's been really hard for me to work with the field producer that we have out there. She just really isn't communicating with me at all. So I'm on this flight and I'm with a, a small film crew who's actually been to Tanzania before and has had only but great things to say about it. Um, so we get to Arusha and things just start to fall apart. Um, we actually end up firing our field producer uh, that day we get there. Um, we have the government fixer, which is assigned by the government to monitor our filming, and he's just pretty terrible, kind of thinks we're guilty from the start now to do bad things. Um, is also trying to ask for more money, even though we already had an agreed upon rate with him. Um, and uh, a lot of our interviews that we had set up um, mainly with the president and other top level officials have all been starting to be canceled. Um, so I'm just really stressed out. And uh, But we do end up finding a great um, health clinic about an hour outside of Arusha. Um, and uh, we're pretty much camped out there every day and there's a, um, a midwife, a nurse, and rarely is a doctor actually on site. Um, so we're there and there's a lot of pregnant women that are coming in either for prenatal checkups for um, to deliver or for their uh, postnatal. And we meet this one woman, Janet, and she's amazing. And she just actually walked five miles to get to the clinic. Um, she thinks she's in labor. She's experiencing pains. Um, but the clinic actually says that she's not in labor and that they can't actually hold her for the evening because she's, uh, they're, they're, they're over uh, booked with, with women in the, um, the waiting room. So they send her back home. So we go home with her. Um, and she it's, it's a drought season there, and it's super dry and dusty and hot, and she lives on top of this hill. So you have to park at the bottom, and we, you know, we're all sweating and carrying heavy film equipment, climbing up this hill, and she's pregnant and in pain and just doing it very gracefully because it's her routine. And, uh, you know, we meet her family, and then we leave. I end up coming back later that evening to give her a cell phone so she can call us um, when she's actually ready to deliver. We'll come get her, We'll you know, so she doesn't have to walk in the middle of the night. And... Uh, we do, uh, oh, well, when I go up there, um, I return by myself. She's actually nowhere in sight. She's gone fetching water for her family. Um, and her son, a five-year-old kid named Dennis, is there. And he's keeping me company, chasing around a chicken to give me as a present. <laughs> um, <laughs> and eventually Janet comes and uh, gives the cell phone. And we do end up returning later that night. Um, and we take her to the clinic which can't do what she needs, so we take her to the hospital, which is about an hour away by car. Um, so she, de she delivers safely, she's healthy, she's a healthy baby boy, um, and after a couple days, we actually end up going to Dar es Salaam, the capital, to do our formal interviews. Um, at this point, our government fixer is no longer with us, um, and we get a phone call from the government telling us that uh, they've been alerted by this fixer. Um, t who has told them that we've been filming inappropriate things, such as naked women, um, women against their will, which is not the case at all, and that they're ready to confiscate our footage and that they're going to come find us. Um, so my object is DVC Pro tapes, which is what we used to use back in the day. Um, now everything's digital, and those were, you know, I had the, the actual footage with me, and we're connecting in Kilimanjaro, so we're, we're taking our domestic flight, and, you know, we're expecting someone's going to be chasing after us is what, what we were told. So I'm, I'm on the flight clinging to my footage. You know, it's been nine months of pre-production and it's, it's been two and a half weeks of filming and working with such wonderful people and it was, you know, there's the possibility of it all being destroyed. So we land in Kilimanjaro at the airport and there's police checking everybody's passports. Um, and sure enough, they're looking for us. Uh, <laughs> so they escort us to a holding room and there's about 15 guys there and they're demanding, show us your footage, uh, show us the film, um, where's your movie? And, you know, we were like, well, we can't show you it. It's just this, you know, bizarre tape. We actually don't have the machinery to show you. Um, and they're, you know, just super frustrated. And it uh, turns out that one of our, um, our friends who's in Tanzania um, gets word of this, and he comes and he, he comes to the airport, and next thing we know, there's a lot of 
handshaking and laughing and hugging going on among the men. <laughs> and we're free to go. So we, we you know, we must have missed that memo that we just needed to slip some money um, to somebody and it would have been fine. Um, so I'm back on that flight, flying home to New York, just never went back to Tanzania. That was so stressful. You know, this has been like really insane experience. I'm done with it. Um, and then four years later, I get asked by a friend to uh, climb Kilimanjaro and I say yes. I will do it. And I go back to, to Tanzania and I march up that hill to where Janet lives and I visit her and she's doing well. She's a baby boy. She, her two sons are in school. And the next day I set off for a seven day climb to Africa's tallest peak. Um, and I raise funds and awareness um, on one of the biggest barriers that pregnant women face in the world, which in, in terms of accessing um, health care and that's distance.